in this video, we are going to find all the rational zeros of a polynomial function. And to do this, we're going to have to apply our rational zero theorem to make a list of all the possible rational zeros first. So in one of the previous videos, we looked at the possible rational zeros, the p over q list. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that list to find out which ones are actual rational zeros. So we're going to have to find our p and our q values. Remember, p here, we have our constant of 3. q, we have our leading coefficient, which is 48. So our p values are all the factors of p, so plus or minus 1 and 3. The q values are the factors of 48. So plus or minus 1, this will be a large list, and 48. 2 and 24 give you 48, 3 and 16 give you 48, 4 and 12 give you 48, and 6 and 8 give you 48. So that is all the p factors and q factors. Now we create the p over q list. That's going to give us our possible rational zeros. So each value in the P is going to be divided by every Q. So 1 divided by 1 and 3 divided by 1. So plus or minus 1 and 3. You get 1 divided by 2 and 3 divided by 2. That's 1 half and 3 halves. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. And when I take 3 and divide by 3, I get 1. And that's already accounted for. Take 1 divided by 4 and 3 divided by 4. Take 1 divided by 6, which is 1 6. And when you take 3 and divide by 6, that's 1 half, which is already accounted for. So 1 eighth and 3 eighths. You get 1 twelfth. And when you do 3 divided by 12, you get 1 fourth. So then I do 1 divided by 16 and 3 divided by 16. I'm going to do 1 divided by 24 and 3 divided by 24. So when I do 1 divided by 24, I get 1 24. Take 3 divided by 24 and you get 1 8. And so then I do 1 divided by 48. And I take 3 and divide by 48, which is 1 16th, which is already accounted for. So my list. I have plus or minus 1, 3, 1 half, 3 halves, and all of these fractions. It is a huge list. And so to make our life easier for this, what we're going to do is we are going to take this list and we are going to input it into our graphing calculator. And that will assist us with, figure, with figuring out which of these are actual rational zeros. So we're going to input these in the graphing calculator. So make sure you have your graphing calculator with you. It's going to involve some changing of some settings, but it'll make our life easier. So go to your y equals, as we have here, and input the original function, 48x to the fourth minus 52x to the third plus 13x minus 3. Now, if we go to our table, second graph, we'll see a lot of x values, but none of them are really our rational ones we have here. We have a lot of fractions, and in our table, it's all integers. So we need to change this. And to change it, if you look above your window button in blue, you see table set. So hit second window. This is your table setup. Scroll down to the independent row. Independent means independent variable. Dependent means dependent variable. The independent variable is your x variable. The dependent is your y. We're going to change this auto setting to ask. So hit the right arrow and enter. And what that does is that allows us to input our own x values into our calculator. Instead of the calculator giving us a list of our own, if we hit second, graph, we'll see it's now completely blank, and we get to input our own. So remember, if your x value is a 0, that means your y, when you plug it in, should be 0. 
So let's start. One, and don't forget you're also dealing with negative one. Three, and negative three. One half, and negative one half. Then I'm at three halves. And what we'll notice is our calculator does not go beyond this point. When doing this ask setup, you can only input six x values at one time. So after this, stop and take a look at what the screen tells you. Right now, I can see I have y values of 0 at 1 half, and I have them at negative 1 half. And so my actual rational zeros, two of them I found right away. X equals one half and negative one half, so plus or minus one half. Now we go back to our calculator. Right now, I like to leave them as is because this tells me what the last value I used was, which was three halves. So I have to use negative three halves and then one third and negative one third. So one divided by three and negative one divided by three. One fourth and negative one fourth. So one divided by four and negative one divided by four. And then I have three fourths and negative three fourths. And I see here, I have two more y values of zero. One occurring here at one third and one occurring here at three fourths. So I also have one third and three fourths. And we just continue through the list. We can scroll back up. That was three fourths. So I have to do negative three fourths, one sixth, negative one sixth, one eighth, and negative one eighth. And then I have three eighths and negative three eighths. None of these do I see any zeros. So I repeat again. This time I ended at negative 3 eighths, so I'm going to go to 1 12. So go all the way to the top. I have 1 divided by 12. I have negative 1 divided by 12. I have 1 divided by 16. And negative 1 divided by 16. I have 3 divided by 16. And negative 3 divided by 16. And then I have 1 divided by 24. If I look, none of these have y values of 0. So I have 1 divided by 24. So I have negative 1 divided by 24, positive 1 over 48, and negative 1 over 48. So I'm going to go up. 1, we have negative 1 divided by 24. We have 1 divided by 48 and negative 1 divided by 48. Hit enter. And then I'm just going to delete the rest since they're not part of the last three numbers we inputted. Again, we don't see any y values of 0. And so this is our complete list. 1 half, negative 1 half, 1 third, and 3 fourths. This one was a long process because there were so many factors with 48 that we had to account for all of them. But wherever you have a y value of zero, there's your list. So the next one's not going to be as long. It's going to be a little bit quicker to do. So if we go to the next problem, 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 12x plus 9. Again, the first thing we're going to want to do is make our p over q list. Find a list of our possible rational zeros. And so that's our p over q list. So here p is 9. So the factors of 9 are plus or minus 1, 3, and 9. q 
q is 2, and the factors of 2 are plus or minus 1 and 2. So when we create our list of possible zeros, possible rational zeros, we take each p, p and divide by each q. So we have 1 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, and 9 divided by 1. So plus or minus 1, 3, and 9. 1 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2, and 9 divided by 2 is 1 half, 3 halves, and 9 halves. See, it's a much smaller list for this problem. And so we're going to use the same process. We are going to input this into our calculator. And when we input it in our calculator, we're going to use the table feature to assist us. So we've already changed our table settings, so we don't have to do it again. What we need to do is just clear out this list, go to our y equals, clear out the previous polynomial, and input the one that we're dealing with now. So 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 12x plus 9. So I have it in my y equals, go to second table, and let's input our rational, possible rational zeros. So we have 1 and negative 1. We have 3 and negative 3. And we have 9, negative 9. Now I still have these fractions to do, but there's three sets and three numbers, positive and negative, that's 6 total. So I'm just going to use my integers first and take a look. I see I do have a 0. At 3, my y value is 0. So my rational zeros, my first one is x equals 3. And so now I'm going to input the 1 half, negative 1 half, 3 halves and negative 3 halves. So there's 1 half. I need to input negative 1 half. And I'm just writing over the previous ones. I have 3 halves and negative 3 halves. I have 9 halves and negative 9 halves. And if I look at this one, I see I have another rational zero and that one occurs at negative 0.5 which is going to be negative one half so i have another rational zero at negative one half and that's it this is a list of all of my rational zeros three and negative one half so once you make that list it's as easy as put it in your calculator just make sure you change the settings and then let the calculator tell you where the y value is zero, which gives you one of your rational zeros.